One thing that catches beginning Next.js developers off guard is that Next.js during development doesn't work the same way as it does in production. First off, we are using Next.js 15 for this tutorial because frankly, Next.js 14 is even worse and it's not worth discussing in a modern Next.js course. Now there are a few differences that we can demonstrate between the development and the production, but let's pick a very simple one by creating a page that makes a fetch request and then simply renders out the response into the user interface. Now, as we know, within Next 15, fetch is not cached by default. The API random int is designed to return a new random integer every single time an API call is made. So if you look at this page, every single time it is rendered, we should get a new random integer. Now let's run our development server, which will start our application at localhost 3000. As you would expect, we see a random integer on screen. Now every single time that we refresh it, the integer changes, which is exactly what we expected because fetch of course is not being cached. Now let's take a look at what happens when we run a production instance of the same application. First, we need to generate a production build with next build. And if you are a keen observer, you can sort of see what's going to go wrong. Next build has determined that our homepage is something that can be statically pre-rendered, which means that when we run our production build application, it's not going to run our server component again because it has already been pre-rendered as a part of the build. And we can verify this when we visit the production build of the application. Refreshing the page does nothing. We get the same response every single time. The calls to the random int API are actually no longer being made. The reason for this difference is that at development time, Next.js tries to be convenient and always runs our component to ensure that we see the effects of any code changes that we might have made. But during production, it's geared towards being as performant as possible. The fix in this particular case is quite simple. We simply mark the route as being dynamic by exporting a variable called dynamic, which we set to force dynamic. And now when we run a production build of the application, we can immediately see that this particular page is going to be rendered on demand as a server function. And we can see it in action by running the production build and visiting it within our browser. Even though we are running a production build right now, every single time we refresh the page, we get a new random integer because a new random int API call is being made in the backend. For more tips and tricks, smash that like and subscribe and check out Boolean Art for complete courses.